he want you to know his word so that you can bring it to his remembrance so that he can work on that and manifest it in your life. He knew, thank you, Holy Ghost. He knew that Pharaoh would not let the people of Israel go. He sent Moses. He told Moses he has hardened Pharaoh's heart. God knew that Pharaoh wouldn't let them go. He knew that he would continue to pursue them. But the people were asking Moses, why did you bring us here to let us die? Why did you bring us here to do this? We should go back to Egypt. And my question to the Lord is, why would you harden Pharaoh's heart and then send Moses to tell him to let your people go. Like it seemed contrary to me, but my, his ways are not my ways and his thoughts are not my thoughts. Right. And so what happened is God wanted his people to know him as Jehovah Jireh. He wanted his people to know that he is faithful and that he will always make a way out of no way that they needed him. And so he needed to harden Pharaoh's heart in order for certain things to take place so that the people of God can depend on God. Period. And that is where God wants us with this soul tie. He wants us to understand what it is, understand and do what it is he's instructing us to do and be real with him about us so that he can clean us. That's why one of the Psalms says, clean me with hyssop, David asked the Lord. He said, give me a pure heart. That is what God wants us to do is to come before him transparent. Listen here, I am a messed up individual God. I need you. He already knows that. And so he wants to perform miracles in your life. And this is one of the ways that I believe the Lord has taken us as we indulge and get into this submission thing. And I said many videos ago, submission is not a bad word. I am not cussing at you. It is a command from God. Wives, submit to your own husbands. Yes, ma'am. It is a command man from God. And so I am just a vessel. I'm just the messenger. If you don't like the message, take it up with the owner. I'm a messenger. And so God has called us to be submissive to our husband. So we want to deal with two forms of soul ties. I don't know if I'll get to the second one. Probably won't because the Lord was still speaking even 20 minutes before this video, but we're going to start with the godly soul ties. And when, and when thinking about soul ties, as we move forward, I want you to consider these three things and, and there'll be more questions that you can consider. And believe me, the information that the Lord has given us, uh, as we go through this, there is so much out there on soul ties and you have to ask the Lord to give you a spirit of discernment so that you can know what it is that he needs you to know, because there are different perspectives and perceptions of soul ties and you need to hear it from the voice of God. And so we don't want to just order books and read up on this stuff. Those things are good. We need to study. We need to, um, uh, research. We need to know what these things are. But everything that you research and everything that you're studying outside of the word of God, you need to ask God to help you with if this is the truth about what you're studying. And then when you're studying the word of God, ask the Lord for wisdom. So consider these three things when you're thinking about soul ties, godly soul ties. And we'll consider this with the ungodly ones as well. But I'm dealing with the godly soul ties. Consider this. Does this person or thing gratify the flesh? The second one, well, let's walk, let's walk through these. Does this person or thing gratify the flesh? And what that means, whether you're single and or you are married, if you are dealing with people, or like I said before, you are dealing with things that you are tied to, that it has your attention. Um, does it gratify your flesh? What you are involved in, is your flesh happy about it? <laughs> does it start telling you um, and or making you feel exactly what you want to hear or feel? Let's think about, let's let's talk about the person. If you are a single lady and there's a gentleman that, that is pursuing you, he is absolutely telling you everything that you want to hear. He is putting his best foot forward every day. In fact, you are asking God, where has he been all of my life?
life. He is doing everything that you want him to do. And you are being emotionally attached to him because of what he is saying and doing to the point where it could lead you to a situation where there are some physical activities that will gratify the flesh. Even without the activity, there may be some butterflies going on, uh, bubbling up in your stomach or every time you see him, every time you speak to him, every time you hear him say hello in his very right voice, it just does something to your flesh. Is what you are into gratifying your flesh? And in some cases, there are women that, that, you know, they feel like this, I am better off with men for friends than I am with quote unquote women because I don't trust women. Let me help you with that because I used to be there too. I don't trust women. I don't have a lot of women friends because they sneaky and they this and they that and they try to be your friend and all the while they want your man. And I lived life that way instead of praying to God for him to send me some godly women who can give me good godly counsel and wisdom who can help me uh, in this journey. And so as I continue to labor for the Lord, I begin, the Holy Spirit begin to prompt me to pray for women who are where I'm going so that when I have a conversation with them and when we are collaborating via telephone, text message, or even if we're in each other's presence, then God will allow me to, to understand and he will heighten my level of discernment to say, this is a woman that I want you to be connected to. So see, you don't throw away women because you feel like you can't trust women. So therefore, we get men who are our friends, who can give us the male perspective. And next thing you know, you're in a situation with that man that you should not have been in because now you are tied to him. You are connected to him emotionally to the point where when you do get married, that can become a problem in your relationship. Yes, ma'am. And so we get these, uh, these, these things and these people and, and it gratifies our flesh. And so, um, how about that? We'll get to the things now, that dream car that you've been wanting. I told you guys a testimony about how I worked so hard and I was single and I went to the BMW lot and I'm going to get this BMW because I work hard and I deserve it. And my God, I looked good in it too. Shades on the seat was automatic when I sit down, it would just automatically go to the setting that I needed to go to. And I mean, I I was thinking about naming the car. I mean, this thing was this thing was good to me, right? And it was a thing, okay? It was a thing. And I told you guys about how at that time I didn't know my husband, but my husband was in his prayer closet who had dated women who were financially set and driving BMWs, and his prayer was God. I don't want another woman with a BMW. I don't want another woman that is so financially set that she can't even see herself, that she can't even see you, Father. Give me a wife. If she's driving a gray Honda, I'm good with that. And for those of you who know me and my family and friends who know me and they knew that debacle and that fight that I went through at the light when God told me to call the BMW place and tell them to clean up the Honda. And I had to do that, not knowing that God was answering the prayer to my husband. Come on, somebody, this thing is real. And so you have this thing, you have this car that you are interested in and you buy this car and you're looking good in this car and you're getting this car washed often. In fact, you mad when it starts raining on your car. You have created an attachment. That when you go to a store, you park in your car way across the parking lot because you don't want nobody to scratch your car. You have created an attachment to this thing and it is gratifying your flesh. Consider that when you're talking about soul ties. Does this person or thing gratify my flesh? I'm going to talk about what that does. Now, does the second thing is, does this person or thing lead me away from God? You can tie that into number one. If what it is that you are doing or saying with a person or people or things, what is it? 
ask yourself the question, is it leading me away from God? And let me explain something to you. Everything that's good is not God. And I'll say that again. Everything that is good is not God. God and we can put ourselves in a place where we want to do good things and we want to be good people but you better make sure that God is telling you to do that thing because what can start off good the Bible says it like this what seemeth right to a man ends up in destruction and so you want to make sure that you heard God when you are doing things because if this person or thing is moving you away from God God, then you have again created a tie and an attachment to this person or to this thing. And let me help you. It is not going to happen all of a sudden when you meet someone and or when you are um, um, doing something or gaining um, something or buying something. It doesn't happen all of a sudden, but these things creep up and then you wonder, how did I get here? And so when you are considering these questions, on if you have godly or ungodly soul ties, consider this, is this thing or this person moving me away from God? How would they move you away from God? So they know you say, they know you love Jesus. When, when you talking about a man who know you love Jesus, you might be single. I've heard this a lot. We both grown. I'm not going to make you do nothing. You don't want to do that psychological demon wants you to do things that you shouldn't do. Uh, but it wants you to, to wrestle with yourself to, 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 to make yourself know I'm grown. I can do what I want to do. And God knows my heart. You walk it right out of the plan of God with that foolish thinking. And so when you thinking about things, well, it's not that bad. I work hard. I can buy this. I, I've sacrificed this. I pay my tithes. I go to church. I do this. I do that. I deserve this thing. And when you get that thing, we'll go back to the car. Then you get laid off of your job. Now you got to work two and three jobs to keep the thing that you are attached to. And then you miss out on spending time with God. And so eventually that thing will will move you away from the Lord. Consider, is this person or thing removing me from God? Number three, and I'm sure there are more, but I'm going to deal with the three that the Lord said today. Number three, how does this person or thing make me feel about myself? See, this goes back to when I get into this, this, um, um, godly soul tie. This is going to tie into that because whatever it is that you are doing, whoever it is that you are speaking to, whatever it is that you are purchasing, how does that thing make you feel about yourself? Because the last time I checked in the word, God said that I was wonderfully and fearfully made. And so I only have an audience of one. It just matters what he thinks about me and who he says that I am. So no person or no thing can make me feel good about myself because God has already put a stamp of approval on me. Do I want my husband to love me and, and, and can't think about nobody else but me? Absolutely. But if he woke up tomorrow and decided he don't want this no more, I am focused on what God says about me. Is it a trend? Would it be a transition? Absolutely. Cause I love me some pastor Frank, but it is about what God says about you, not what people and not what things, how things make you feel. And so if a person can make you feel a certain way about yourself, you need to go back and, and, and let God explain to you who you are and who he's made you to be and what your calling is in the earth realm. Because your calling in this earth, it doesn't mean that other people solidify who you are. God has already put a stamp of approval on you. So when you are thinking about godly and ungodly soul ties, consider the question, how does this person or this thing make me feel about myself? If they are bringing the worst out in you, first of all, there needs to be some repentance and you need to get far away from that person and get back into the presence and the secret place of God. Because if you can come out of character because of a person or because of a thing, 
then there is some deliverance that needs to happen in your life. Amen. I'll say amen to that. And so how does this person or thing make you feel about yourself? So let's talk about it. Godly soul ties. And let's, let's, let me make this disclaimer. This is not the end all be all as it pertains to godly soul ties. I'm sure again, as I said, there's much more and I am excited about what God reveals and continues to teach us. And so let's look at the good ones, the godly soul ties and, and your life. Uh, is this person or this thing in your life making your life a better life? Are they making you a better person? Are they providing strength and support for you so that you can become all that you need to be? Healthy soul ties, listen to this, enhances uh, you and enhances your life. It enhances your relationship with Christ healthy soul ties so many times where I'm thinking, you know, I got this thing down packed and I'm going to be with the Lord over here and I'm going to, you know, do this and do that for the Lord. And sure enough, he'll speak to my husband and say, tell her to come back into my, into my presence. I, I need her back in my presence. I need her longer than before. And I'll be looking like, but I was just there. But God is wanting us in his presence and so, so that he can enhance us. And so healthy soul ties enhances us. So the first soul tie that is a good one is the one that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ with God. He created us, uh, with in, within his mind to have an intimate relationship with us. And so God is truly fulfilling us when we come into a union with him. When I can consider those three questions, uh, when you're thinking about being saved, you can consider is God, is this what I'm doing going to gratify my flesh? I can answer that for you. No, God is a spirit and he wants us to walk by the spirit and not in the flesh because we are in this world and we are not of it. And so that he is a good soul tie. Does a person or thing move me away from God? Absolutely not. He will draw us closer to him. Scripture says it's by loving kindness that I have drawn thee and he is loving and kind. And how does this person make me feel about myself? Well, you can answer that all day long with several scriptures where God is telling us how wonderful we are and what our inheritance is. And so knowing that, then he is the first and foremost tie connection that I need to be involved with. Yes, I need to be involved with him emotionally um, so that he can enhance me and do what it is that he wants me to do. And so when I our soul functions as God intended. We are submitted to him, spirit, soul, and body. And then we can experience the peace of his presence that abides on the inside of us. And so listen, John 15 and five, I'm going to take you there. John 15 and five. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in, in him bears much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. I said to you before the word soul ties is not written in scripture, but there are so many things that explain what soul ties are. And we'll talk more as we go on about, you know, the, the, the relationships and the ties between Ruth and Naomi and, and all of those, um, in the, in the scripture, we'll go through that. But John 15 and five says he is the vine and we are the branches and he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. Remember, we said the definition of soul ties is an emotional bond that form an attachment and that they were godly or ungodly, pure or demonic. So the first thing is that we need to be sure that we have a bond with the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is not just about getting saved. You can get saved and not have a bond. The scripture says it like this, that their mouth 
says that they love me, but their hearts are far from me. And so you can receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and continue to live your life the way you want to when things don't happen how you think they should happen. And so you can be saved and be a believer. You believe that Jesus Christ uh, exists. You believe that God, that he died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead. And yet you can have, you can be living and not have a bond with him. And so... Uh, we need to have a bond with the Lord Jesus Christ in order to do that um, and to know uh, how to do that. We need to understand the bond that Jesus had with the father because he said he only does what he sees father do. And so we need to understand the bond that he had with the father so that we can know how to bond with our Lord and savior. And one of the ways that Jesus bonded with the father was through prayer. Okay, let's get in it. He bonded with his father through prayer. So many scriptures where we see Jesus went up and prayed or left the disciples and went over to pray. And they, when, when all hell was breaking loose, Jesus was somewhere praying in, on the boat and the wind is blowing and Jesus is sleeping. We've seen all of these things and how he bonded with the father. Remember, we said we don't want to be unfruitful and or ineffective. And so prayer is the key. If you want to be fruitful and if you want to be effective, prayer is the key. And I'm not talking about sitting on the side of your bed every morning, having your little devotion for five or 10 minutes, and then you out the door. And that prayer looks like, Lord Jesus, thank you for waking me up this morning. Father, I praise you. And Father, as I go to work, let your angels protect me and keep me, Father, under the shadow of your wings. And I thank you, Lord God, that I'm going to have a good day. And and boom, you out of there. I'm talking about spending time with the Lord. I'm talking about communing with God, conversations where you just get to yourself with just him and you. I'm talking about leaving a conversation or leaving people where they are. Or you might be at work sitting at your desk. Well, not in this environment because we're not in the office right now. But when you are at work sitting at your desk and you just get up and go to the bathroom so you can just be alone with the father or you can't wait to get home so you can drop your bags and get yourself in a comfortable space so you can just go commune with God. I'm talking about daily, daily conversations with the Lord God to get instruction and direction. I'm not talking about little devotional prayers. I'm talking about spending time with God. And that is what Jesus did. And we see in Matthew 26 and 39, it says he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed. And this is when he was in the garden of Gethsemane. And he was saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible that this cup passes from me, Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That's a popular scripture when we talk about the, the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That's a popular scripture about him asking God to remove that cup from him that showed his humanity, that he was human and that he knew why he was there. But at, he, he didn't want to do that when it came time, his flesh, he, he wanted to show us that he was still in the earth realm operating in the flesh that you and I operate in. But then he said to the Lord, not my will, but your will be done. What I see here is while even while Jesus went into the father's presence to ask him to deliver him from this particular thing, he quickly got in alignment with the will of God. And this is crucial when you are dealing with soul ties. Again, if it's a person or a thing, you want to be in a place where you are in alignment with God. All soul ties are not bad. They are not ungodly and all of them are not demonic. But you have to be able to discern this and how you are going to discern it is if you stay in prayer. You cannot function without being in prayer. You cannot hear God without being in prayer. You cannot walk in the footsteps that he has ordained and predestined for you to walk in without prayer. 
You can't enjoy your relationship with your husband if you don't talk to him, if you don't know his most innermost secrets or his dreams, his anxieties, his, you know, the things that really makes him happy, the things that make him tick. You, you wouldn't know not to do certain things if you didn't talk to him. So how do we think that we can live and not talk to God? And furthermore, how do we think that we can live and or be successful if we don't talk to him in addition to listening to him? And so are you the one that prays and get up and keep it moving? Or are you the one that prays and lay there just in case he want to say something? You got to get this. You cannot do nothing outside of God. And so being able to, to understand what soul tie you are currently in and or need to get out of, you will not know it without the revelation of Christ Jesus. He needs to reveal that to you. <coughs> and so Jesus got in alignment with the will of God for his life and proclaimed not my will, but your will be done. And that is what our prayer life should be. Father, your will be done. Even when we don't like it, even when we don't understand it, there, I mean, we can plan. I don't like this place. I'm moving from here. <laughs> let me, let me just get on with the next part of my life. I was sharing with my husband when I used to tell my daughter to do something when she was little and she didn't want to do it. She would say, mom, she would say, mama. That's not the will of God for my life because <laughs> she didn't want to do it. And, and I'm laughing, but seriously, that is how we are with God. When he wants us to do something we don't want to do, Satan, I rebuke you. That's the devil. That is not the will of God for my life. And God is imploring you to do something that is far beyond your ability to get it done. And all he needs is a yes. So he can show out and show favor and show miracles in your life so that you can do and be who he's called you to. But you um, operate, or I should say we operate in this mindset where if all of our ducks don't line up and if we can't cross every T and dot every I and if our financial situation is not exactly where it needs to be, then God, I don't know how this is going to work. I can't do this. When God is just saying, all I need you to do is come in alignment with my will for your life and say yes all of his promises are yes and amen the thing is the bible is clear and we we sometimes we misinterpret this scripture but the bible is clear that all of his promises are yes it is us that needs to say amen and amen means so be it it is so and so if you want the promises of god and you'll get the promises of God. If you want to know, are these soul ties healthy or unhealthy? And God will show you that, but you got to be in his presence. I love prayer. I can talk on prayer all day long. And so this should be a lifestyle that when you are praying that you, that no matter whether you are conscious or not of what is going on as it pertains to the why, Father, let your will be done in our life. You put those things at the altar. You pray prayers like Jesus Christ. And God will answer you. Wait for the answer. Pray prayers like, Father, show me where, where I'm coming up short. What do I need to repent of? What things do I need to get rid of? What people do I need to, um, uh, you know, escort out of my life? And some of us don't ask those prayers because we don't want to hear it. Because he's going to tell us, if you say yes to the will of God for your life and you turn around and ask him, what is it do I need to do now? Trust me, if you wait for a response, he will tell you who you need to get out of your life, what you need to stop doing, what you need to repent of. And people think that this, that this repentance thing now is, oh, so it's got to be something wrong with you. You, you. You're not, you're not the Christian that you say you are. If you got to repent, why repentance should be a lifestyle because this body, this flesh, this house that God has placed us in is subject to error. And so we need to live a lifestyle 
of repentance. I went in prayer one time and just, it was like the whole prayer time was just repentance because why? Because I asked the Lord to show me where was things going on where I didn't do something right. I said something wrong. I may, I, I, I said something to someone that, that I, when I left their presence, they weren't feeling good. They were offended. When I asked God to reveal those things to me, what is it that I did or said? And, and the Holy Ghost began to show me and I went right into repentance. And guess what? I was free. So you cannot think that if you got to live a lifestyle of repentance, then something got to be wrong with you. No. Everything is right with you and you are growing in the things and the grace of God. God has given you grace. Hallelujah. He's given you grace when you can humble yourself and repent and let God give you a heart like his. Doesn't mean that you are weak because you've humbled yourself. It doesn't mean that you are weak because you didn't respond to that person that disrespected you the way that you would have normally responded. It doesn't mean that you're weak. It means that you understand that this battle is not yours and just how you saw it, God saw it too. And he's taking care of that. And so the only thing that you got to do is bless that person in love. Father, I pray for him. I bless him right now. I ask that you will touch their heart, God, and bless them, bless their family, bless their jobs, bless their businesses. Yes, I am blessing people that are trying to curse me. Yes. Because God is glorified in it. And that is the will of God. When they were preparing to take Jesus to the cross. He didn't curse them. Because the blessing is in blessing those that use you. Despitefully use you. Curse you. Those that can't stand you. Bless them. Yes. That is how you stay in the will of God. And so John 4 34 says, Jesus said to them, he was talking to his disciples. John 4 34 says, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. We're talking about godly soul ties. How do you get attached to the Lord Jesus Christ? How do you get attached to God and have a godly tie with the Lord Jesus? He said, my food to, is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Sounds like lifestyle to me. You want to accomplish what God has sent you to do and you are committed to doing that. Why? Because the Lord Jesus sustains us. And when you think of, I love the way Jesus makes these parables to his disciples because when you, because when you think about food and when you think about the nutrition of it and how it sustains you, and yes, we go through our three day fast or our one day dry fast or our, you know, I don't know, 30 day fast in, in the beginning of the year or 21 day fast whatever fast you're on you go through those things periodically just like prayer should be a lifestyle let me plug this in fasting should be a lifestyle because that is how you humble yourself before the Lord is you push the food away okay um, so so when you think about food and how it sustains you and you think about putting that stuff away to go into the presence of God Hear me, you are going to get direction. That is a godly soul tie that you want. And you get that in prayer and fasting. And so Jesus is telling his disciples, this is my food, is to do the will of the Father. Now think about this. If you ate once a month, would you, how healthy would you be if you just ate once a month? And the same is if you just go into the presence of God or if you, if you talk to God once a month, how much are you going to get out of that relationship? But everything else has your attention. I have seen so many ideas to stay busy in this pandemic and not one said, get into the presence of God. God is currently speaking. But we are so busy about what game to play, how to stay busy, how to move our time along because we got to be in the house. Unfortunately, there were some people that took their lives because they could not grasp being alone and not around people when God is calling us to him. 
He wants to talk to you. He wants to commune with you. He wants to give you clear direction, but you are so busy doing everything else. And why? Because you are tied to those things. Some people are tied to social media. Facebook went down a couple of times last year or so, and people was going crazy because they couldn't get on Facebook. Why? Because we are tied to things that are what we said in num number um, one or two. It's moving us away from God and God is calling us near him. John 5 19 when Jesus said to the disciples in John 5 19 that he only does what he sees his father do it's because he had an emotional connection with the father he was attached he was him <laughs> and so if we have Christ in us if we have the Holy Ghost in us we should be experiencing him Jesus was him John 1 14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the father, full of grace and truth. Prayer is what connects us to him. He became flesh so that we can receive him and have everlasting life, have eternity with him and when we talked about consequences and even though you are saved you still will experience some consequences for the things that you have done doesn't mean that your eternity has been impacted because salvation clears up your eternity what you do in this life and in your flesh will still bear consequence and so we talked about if you cheated on your husband and you got pregnant that is the consequence of your affair just because you Ask the Lord to forgive you doesn't mean that the baby goes away and so Jesus came in the flesh he was him so if he said I only do what I see my father do and he dwells in you why is it that we cannot do what we see and or hear him tell us to do we are still connected to things that we shouldn't be connected to. We are still connected to ways that we shouldn't be connected to. And we're running off of this cliche that God knows my heart. And I said that one time to God in prayer and quickly the Holy Ghost, it was years ago. And the Holy Ghost said, yeah, I know your heart, but do you know minds? Because if you knew minds, you would not have done what you did. And oh God forgive me like something that simple you just can't say God knows your heart and keep walking like everything is okay you need to understand that if the Lord Jesus Christ dwells on the inside of you there are just some things that you're not going to do anymore there are just some soul ties that you're not going to have anymore there are just ladies when you are married there are just some men or all men that are not your husband that cannot be your best friend anymore if you want a male perspective go to your husband there should not be another man that can say that is my best friend oh me her and her husband are best friends but i met her first if you have <laughs> if you want a relationship that you can dwell that you and your husband that he can trust you what man wants to hear that another man is your best friend help me with that somebody who wants to hear that or if your husband is constantly talking about his ex to you why is that is there some ties that have not been broken are you the wife that God wants you to be to your husband? Because if you are, he should have forgot about those exes <laughs> and she shouldn't be a conversation. And so we have to think about if we are not in the presence of God, if we are not um, in prayer, if the word of God is not saturating our mind, then we cannot bring those things that are exalting itself above Christ into captivity because we don't know how because we don't know how to appropriate the word of God in our lives because we don't know how when we pray well people say I don't know how to pray can you help me how to pray I say yeah open the Bible go to any scripture you want to I'm gonna show you how to pray 
because we hang on the Lord's prayer. Our father, which art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread. We, we go on that prayer and we get up and go as if we spend time with God. You want to know how to pray? Pick any scripture, go to the word of the Lord. And whatever it is that God is saying, Proverbs is a good start. Everywhere that the word is saying something, you ask God for that according to your life. According to his will for your life. You need an example of that. Jesus said in John 4, 34, we just read this scripture. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus, according to John 4 and 34, I thank you that, that my food in this season of my life, my food is your will. I pray God that your will will be done in my life. I thank you that your word sustains me. Pray the word of the Lord over your life. Do it. You don't need a fancy prayer from another pastor. You don't need a, you don't need a prophetic word that you got to pay a thousand dollars for anyway. Come on somebody. You don't need somebody else to tell you what's going to happen in your life. Get in the word. You want a prophetic word? Read the Bible. This with soul ties. <laughs> and so John 1 14 said, Jesus said, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we saw his glory glory as the only begotten from the father full of grace and truth prayer is what connects us to the father it grows our personal relationship with him his word when we are infilled with his word and the filling is over and over and over again god i need you today i need you to fill me up again there, <laughs> i <laughs> I, God, I need you to fill me up again today because I don't know what is coming to me. And when it gets here, I need to understand how to deal with that. I need your grace today. I need your mercy today. I need you to fill me up with agape love. I need you to fill me up, Father God. So no matter what or who comes in my presence with an interior motive, Father, I need you to fill me up so that I can respond according to your word. We have to be filled with the word of the Lord and you get that in filling in prayer. Amen. And so Jesus, as our pattern, as our example, made a decision to do what? To be controlled only by God, no one else. And that is a tie. That is a connection that you want where you can only be controlled and do the things of God. Nobody else controls you. And so even those whom he greatly loved, we must do the same determining not to allow people or things to control us. Because now you're talking about again, an attachment. So you have to be cognizant that nobody is controlling you. Nobody is making you do things that you don't want to do. And you can't discern this if you're not in prayer. And we talked about, I'm going to say this, I, there's a, um, a book called Breaking Unhealthy Soul Ties by Bill and Susan Banks. And this is what they said. Anything less than full, total, and immediate Obedience is disobedience. <laughs> Anything less than full, total, and immediate obedience is disobedience. That means you can't obey God just a little bit. You can't be lukewarm when you know the word of God, but you decide you're going to have one foot in and one foot out. The Bible says God will spew you out of his mouth. He don't like lukewarm believers. And so if it's not in full obedience to the Lord, it's disobedience. Does that mean that you have to be perfect? No. Why? Because you live a life of repentance. That's why. And so if you are repenting for those things that you've done, then you should be growing. You shouldn't be repenting for the same thing. You should be growing in God. When you have repented and God has taught you how to do and how to treat people and how to, how to be, I've had people tell me, I don't know how you deal with these people, but it's the love of God. I don't know how I do it either. 
Does it come to me? Can this person please get out of my face? Absolutely. But God's grace keeps us. And a life of repentance will keep your focus on what God has called you to. It'll keep your focus on purpose, your focus on destiny. And when you are focused on fulfilling destiny, the craziness, I don't have time for that. I don't have time. I don't have room. I don't want to hear it. Be gone with that because I'm focused on destiny. So you don't have time for the craziness. And when people are coming to you, first of all, if you know they're not saved, you should be ministering to them the word of the Lord. Okay. That is how I knew. That is how I separated myself when I was single, asking God for a husband. When are you going to send them, Lord? I'm just waiting patiently. All of these men are coming out of the woodwork. I don't know which one really wants to date me. Whatever. I don't know. And the Lord gave me this single tactic. Every man that comes to you, tell them they got to ask your pastor if they can date you. They got to ask your pastor if they can call you and if they can date you. And every man that I told that to outside of my husband, they wasn't trying to hear it because they had hidden agendas. So in prayer, you get ideas from God. You get direction from God. And when I said to Frank, you got to ask my pastor if you can date me. He said, okay. <laughs> and I was so mad that my pastor said, yes, I made him and his wife come with us on the date. And Frank had to pay for everything because I was like, nah, nah, this can't be right. But God said it. And so you have to be in prayer to be able to hear what God is saying. Anybody that knows me intimately, that I am on a phone call with a lot. If something comes up that they just don't understand why this is happening, you have heard me say it over and over again. Keep your, your ears at the mouth of God because you can call me at 12 midnight. I'm not answering the phone. I might not get to you to the next day. But if you keep your ears to the mouth of God, he is always there to respond to you. He is always there to help you with what you need. But you have to stay in prayer. You cannot pray once a week, once a month, once at, you know, a 911 prayer. You have to stay. You have to have a lifestyle of communing with God. Period. That's it. And so Jesus, as our example, allowed no one else to control him but God. Refusing to be in bondage to family, friends, things, your economical status, stocks, money. When you refuse to be in bondage to those things and only God is controlling your thoughts and your mind and your heart and giving you direction. Joshua 1 8 says, be careful to meditate on the word, not be careful. It says meditate on the word day and night and be careful to do all of it. And then you will bring, you will be prosperous and successful. You will make yourself successful. So your mind has to be on the things of God. If you want success, your mind needs to be on the things of God. Now, let me help you with this prosperity in, in my studies means shalom. It means peace. It's funny how the Bible puts that word right next to each other, prosperity and success. So when you think about that, some people think it means I'm going to have a lot of money and I'm going to be successful. If you are successful in what you do and you're making a lot of money with it, why would God say it twice, right? We need to really study <laughs> and get into the word of the Lord. Prosperity means peace. How many need the peace of God? You have to, you have, when you are in the peace of God and the perfect will of God, you will be successful. So Jesus didn't allow anyone else to control him. He rejected the pressure of the enemy. 
We know he rejected it because we read about it when Jesus was in the wilderness and he rejected the pressure of the enemy. So he was tempted in his body because he was hungry. You can read that in Matthew 4, 2 through, two through 4. But Jesus was tempted in his soul is what I wanted to get to. I didn't want to go through this whole story because a lot of us know this. When Jesus, after he got baptized and, and, the, and, and the dove ascended um, on his shoulder and the Lord said he was pleased with him. And then the Holy Spirit led him up into the wilderness for 40 days. And so we know that. But here I want to show, I want to call this out to you. Jesus was tempted in his soul to validate his own identity and function apart from him. He was tempted in his soul. He was tempted in who he was connected to. <laughs> and so, and so when the, when, when the enemy tried him and said, you know, you hungry, turn the rocks into bread. Or if you just bow to me, I'll give you all the kingdoms. How are you going to give somebody what, what's already theirs anyway? He was tempted in his soul. Who he was connected to was questioned. Why? How do I know that? Because the, in, the Bible says that the devil said, if you be the son of God. He was questioned on who he was connected to. But because he refused to let anybody or anything get next to him and control him, he knew that God validated him. He knew who he was connected to. So he couldn't be tricked about who he was. Can you imagine if Jesus said, I'll show you that I'm the son of God and made the rocks bread? He would have played into the enemy's game. <laughs> So his soul, hallelujah, was tempted. Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. And then the Bible says the devil left him. Why? Because Jesus, the enemy could not validate nor show him anything that would validate who he was. Because up in John, we just talked about the word became flesh. You, you talking to the word, you trying to dismantle and confuse and disconnect the word. Come on. So if you, if, when people are trying to disconnect you from the things of God through soul ties, you got to know who you are. You got to know who you belong to. You got to know who you are connected to. And if you are not spending time in prayer, then it, it then I would have the question, who are you connected to? Who are you talking to? Who's leading you? Who's directing you? You connected to prophet Pharaoh? Who are you connected to? If it's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you need to repent and you need to get connected in prayer. And so Jesus declined to submit himself to an ungodly spirit. This is, this is, this is important to us. We need to do these things that I'm just about to tell you. Decline to submit yourself to ungodly spirits. It's no such thing, uh, you know, I just do this socially or, you know, I do whatever every now and again. If it's not pleasing to God, just because you don't do it every day doesn't make it okay. Just because you do it sociably doesn't make it okay. You need to get yourself away from ungodly spirits you need to refuse man pleasing don't try to please man it's not gonna work for you because they'll be pleased one minute and disgusted in the next and you'll be the one confused running around a hamster a hamster wheel trying to please somebody until finally you will know you can't please human beings you just can't <laughs> I'm a witness. You cannot please human beings. You can give them what, what they want. It feels good in the moment, but they're not pleased. And if you continue long enough 
and you and 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 you get in the presence of God and let him show you you will understand you can't please man so stop trying to please man refuse to be a man pleaser refuse for the self pleasing i worked hard i went to school i did this i did that i deserve this refuse the self pleasing doesn't work well the Bible says it like this, acknowledge God in everything that you do and he will direct your path, lean, your path. Don't lean on your own understanding because you can, you can self please only for a moment. So don't self please or acting at the, the, the very epitome or, or I should say playing with evil spirits. Don't play with them. You know, it's, it's, it's not becoming of us as believers to play with evil spirits. And when you spend time in prayer and you understand warfare and the things that are coming after you, this is not a play time. This is war. <laughs> so you don't play when it's time to dismantle the things that, that the enemy has planned for you. God is the number one attachment, especially if you are single and we talked about that videos and videos ago, you got to go out there and look at that. But if you are single, you, your work should be about the Lord, not yourself. If you are married, your work should be about your husband. You need to submit to your husband, C connect to your husband. That's a godly soul tie. And so we want to make sure here again, that we are not, Following men, trying to please men. We are not submitting ourselves to ungodly spirits. We are not self-pleasing and or playing with evil spirits. God doesn't want our souls in bondage to these, to these ties. He doesn't want us connected to things that are contrary to him. I'm going to end this right here. I won't get to this today. <laughs> I won't get to this, but the other, it, I will go into the other godly soul tie is that of you and your husband. I don't care what you are dealing with. I don't care what the issue is. If you at first, let me say this. If you and your husband are believers, you should be able with God as your foundation, with God as the final authority, you should be able to come through everything and anything irreconcilable differences was made for the world not for the church because there is nothing that God that Jesus Christ cannot reconcile in fact and I say this to you every week we are ministers of reconciliation and so if we are ministers of reconciliation why can we not reconcile the issues in our relationships why? Because there are some ties. There are some connections. There are some things that we need to break. And we'll get into that. Next week, God willing, we're going to talk about the godly soul tie between you and your husband and what God meant when he created that. How it was supposed to be and how it can still be. You don't have to let the world validate what your marriage should look like. Who cares if people are talking about you? She crazy. I wouldn't do that. If I was her, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. I don't see how she can do that. I don't understand why. Well, because you haven't come in alignment with the word. It should be a joy to submit to the authority that God has placed over you in your home. So we're going to talk about that next week. I love you with the love of the Lord. I'm excited. I am always excited about what God is doing. I anticipate his voice. I want to hear where we going next. What are we going to do next? I'm excited. I love it. I love Jesus. And I'm excited about what he is going to do. And so next week, God willing, we want you to come back and tune in about this godly, these godly soul ties and what they mean to God. I just can't wait to to see what God is going to unveil for us next week. End of April It's April 11th. My God, um, God willing, we will have, um, one of my good, good friends who is single 
and living her life for the Lord. And we'll go more into introducing who she is at that time when we go live. But I'm excited to hear from her. I have seen her grow in, in areas that she probably feels like, I feel like I'm going around in circles, but there is growth. <laughs> and so I'm just excited to have her um, come and talk with us the end of, of April. Thank you for all of your gifts and all of your love. Uh, Pastor and I appreciate your support. Um, it means everything to us. And I thank God for all of you online viewers who, um, are seeking answers and who are getting deliverance after or after every teaching I never leave this recorded without offering salvation um, because as I say every week it's not about it's not all about what it is that I'm telling you more so than it is about pointing you back to Jesus and so if you are a sinner or a backslider say this prayer with me Lord Jesus I am a sinner. I have walked away from your word. Forgive me for my sins. I believe in my heart that you are the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that you died for me and that God raised you up from the dead. So Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you just said that prayer with me, hallelujah, um, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. The Bible says when one comes back to the Lord. And so I am excited about your future. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Get into a Bible teaching church that will teach you the word. The responsibility of your pastor is to make you ready to prepare you. The Bible says for the work of ministry. And it's not just the work that that local ministry is doing. It's the work of your ministry that God has placed on your heart. And so your, the, the job of your leaders are to equip you, the Bible says, for the work of ministry inside the church building and the ministry that God has given you to do. So get in a Bible teaching church that can teach you the word and disciple you and prepare you and equip you for the work that God has called you to, because there is a work that God has called you to. And so I am excited about that. Listen, I posted a post to support my sister, Janet uh, Miguel Hopkins. Um, she is, she is uh, an Avon representative and she is giving the silk hand cream and the cream for the feet. She is taking care of the frontliners, doctors, nurses, everyone in the hospital that is on the front line. She is donating these silk hand lotions and um, lotions for the feet because they are standing up a long time. And the Lord has um, commissioned her to do this and put this on her heart. And so I posted a post out there on my page to um, go ahead and support her. I think it's $25 a set for those of you um, that are into Avon and you have your representatives, you probably know how much those things cost. And um, I used to do Avon years ago and sometimes it's not that inexpensive. Um, and so I don't know if, if Janet is taking a loss or whatever it is that she's doing, but I want to bless her ministry and thinking about those that are frontliners, the, the, the smallest thing that we can do. Um, I believe that God will is glorified. And so go on out there and support her, send her a donation. Um, and we want to make sure that these frontliners get what they need. We'll be coming back with you on where the um, ministry will be distributing food. Um, the, the food bank is waiting for us to, so that, so that we can tell them where uh, we will be distributing that. And so I'm waiting on some phone calls, but we will be distributing food to the communities and keep people fed. Hallelujah. Uh, through this pandemic. And so continue to pray, stay in the presence of God and know that he validates you. No one else. God validates you. And if you want the, the first soul tie, if the, the good one, if you want to know how everything else is going to pan out, make him first. 
okay make him first god bless you we love you with the love of the lord if you have questions you can put them in the comment field or you can message me got some questions um, this week in in the Facebook message that I was able to collaborate with some people and so if you have questions you can either put them in the comment field I'll wait for my admin to let me know if there are any there um, or you can inbox me in messenger questions about marriage submission how to what if I don't understand whatever it is um, those questions that you have we are going to respond out of the Word of God if you want to know what those uh, questions look like we have a Q&A out on YouTube where we did two hours of questions and the Lord um, just answered those questions uh, through the scripture and so we are excited about that the other thing ladies we talked about praying right praying the word of the Lord and so yours truly got something for you coming I hope to have it to the um, to the publishers by the end of May but we're gonna help you pray for your man because they need prayer <laughs> uh, but oftentimes it's us that needs to change so the house can shift right and so we need to be in alignment with the Word of God we need to be in our place so that the Lord can get glorified out of our lives. And so thank you for joining us. Sorry about the technical difficulties in the beginning, but I believe that God has gotten across the message that he needed to get across to us today. And without further ado, God willing, we will see you back here next Saturday at 1 p.m. God bless.